All right, my man, state your name. Let them know you're on Nickavelli TV. Yo, my name is Steve Belly. I'm from the Boogie Down Bronx, Hunts Point section. Mad sports fanatic. Yep. Loving it every day. We talk about it. And we on Nickavelli, baby. Okay. Now, Nick fan. How long you been a Nick fan? I've been a Nick fan for, for, for basically my whole life. Yeah? My whole life. From the days of Dave DeBush, Walt Frazier, Earl of Pearl Monroe, Jerry Lucas, Willis Reed, them say Dick Barnett, Bill Bradley, and the list goes on, all the way up to Mason, to Charles Smith, who blew that layup, who got his shit swatted by Jordan, Horace Grant, and Scottie Pippen. All right, talk to me, player, because you, you're giving me a Nick Rush, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. But if we was to go by each era, let's talk about the 70s. Who was your favorite player then? Oh, it had to be Earl of Pearl. Black you, Jesus, that's the original Black Jesus right there. I mean, like, he had the shake and bake moves. He could shoot, he could score, he could dish off the rock. And like, actually he was like one of the dudes who pretty much had the first crossover. Earl of Pearl? Earl of Pearl. You know what I'm saying? He could boogie his way to the basket. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was like, back then, Kyrie Irving. You know what I'm saying? Mm, so he was the Kyrie Irving before the Kyrie Irving. Before the Kyrie Irving. Who had heart to come to the city of New York. You had heart to come and, and, to the city of New York. Okay, all right, all right. He, he, was, he was one of the players that came on the Broadway show. That's he ain't right. do the off-Broadway. No, nah, no. Nah. Okay, I, I got you, I got you. That 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 player, I, I got you. You know Nick got to throw a little salt in the wound. Yeah, of course, for sure, for sure, for sure. All right, so, so Claude Frazier was that, I mean, Earl of Pearl was that too. Earl of Pearl but was Clyde that Frazier was the engine that, that made the Knicks run, though, man. Talk to me about that, man. I mean, the, the man's defense was outstanding, man. I mean, he would pick your pocket clean. You come, you come down the court dribbling, and he would pick your pocket clean. Mm. I mean, he was an all-around great player, you know mm. what I'm saying? He could score, he could shoot the ball, and he played excellent defense. You know? Now, would you say that he was a better point guard than Mark Jackson? If you had to rate or compare... Mark Jackson to Clyde Frazier. Don't I mean, put it this way. Clyde Frazier basically is, 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 was a two guard in a point guard's body. I'm saying because Earl Monroe played the two, Clyde Frazier played the one. But as far as being a true point guard, Mark Jackson was a true point guard. Over, I mean, over Clyde? Over Clyde Frazier. Because Mark Jackson, that's what he did. He dished the ball. You know what I'm saying? He was a pass first, score second guard. Clyde Frazier, he could pass the ball, but he scored. You know what I'm saying? He okay. was more of a two guard. Okay. He was more of a two guard. And um, like I said, overall, Clyde Frazier was the better player. But Mark Jackson could dish the rock. That's why he's like fourth all time in assists in NBA history. Mark Jackson. Yeah, because Mark Jackson could just arrive. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Even when he was at St. John's with Walter Berry, Chris Mullen, and um um um, um Bill Winnington, you know what I'm saying? He was just in the rock. He he wasn't scoring. All he had to do was just the ball of Chris Mullen. Right. Or Walter Berry. And it was automatic, pretty much. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when he came to the Knicks, you know what I'm saying, it was a great pick for the Knicks, you know what I'm saying? It was a young team. And that was his job primarily, just to dish the rock. He would he would score a little twenty points. Now points. it's this mystery point guard I keep hearing about. I think Sugar, that he was sitting on the bench when Clyde Frazier came. It was a point guard that was doing the goddamn thing on the Knicks, and they sat him on the bench. They put Frazier in, and it was a wrap. He ain't getting no more minutes. Mm -hmm. But I think his name was Sugar. You're not familiar with him. Nah, I gotta, I, I gotta look it up. I gotta Google it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, when yeah. I get the time, I'll Google it. And when we come back out here, I'm, I'm gonna talk about it. All right. And my man, Dick Barnett. Dick Barnett was the classic wingman, man. All he had to do was spot up and shoot. That was it. It was lights out. You know what I'm saying? If they had three pointers back then, right? He he probably be one of the all time greats in three point shooting because he could shoot the rock. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He was just a spot up shooter. He but he knew how to move without the ball. Mm. And he knew how to get over. He was like Reggie Miller. He was another Reggie Miller back then. You know what I'm saying? But like I like we were talking about, it was a different era back then. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't as athletic, but he just knew how to get over. He knew how to get over and shoot the ball. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about this Nick Hurts, which we're trying to break so desperately from. 
Would you say the Nick Curry started with Bernard King when we let him go to the Washington Bullets? Mm, I don't think it's the Nick Curry. I think the upper management, James Dolan. Um, you know, he, he, he does every – I mean, I understand that he, he owns the team, man, but he just meddles into the team affairs too much, man. He just needs to stick to cable vision. Whatever he owns, hire somebody that's really experienced, you know what I'm saying, that, that, that knows players, that knows what it takes to win, that knows how to create a blueprint for a championship team. And James Dolan, you know, he makes these ill hirings like Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson really didn't want to come here. It was just about the money. Mm. That's what it was about. It was just about the money. You know, James Dolan throws seventy-two million at, at Phil Jackson. Who wouldn't want to take the job? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So let me ask you this: If Phil Jackson never would have came to the Knicks as the team president, do you think Melo will still be a Knickerbocker to this day? I doubt it. I doubt it. I think um, during I the, the worst thing I, I, I the Knicks did was trade their core of the team just to acquire uh, Carmelo Anthony. They had a great team with Felton, Wilson Chandler, Gallinari. They had a good team back then. And they basically traded that whole team just to get Carmelo Anthony. That might have been the Nick Curse right there. Because that year when they had Stoudemire, they were a 54-win team. Right, under Mike Woods. Under Mike Woods, yeah. Correct. And then... Dolan was the one who wanted Carmelo Anthony so bad at that point where he could have signed him the following year because Carmelo was going to be a free agent. But he was in so much of a rush to bring star power to New York and they necessarily didn't need it. They were a winning team. And after Carmelo came, um, Stoudemire and, and Carmelo just didn't mesh. Because Stoudemire was a down low player. And Stoudemire was doing his thing before Carmelo came. You know mm. what I'm saying? So you think if no, there was no Carmelo, let's say there was no Carmelo, he never came this way to the city of New York, you think St uh, Amari would have did his thing better yeah. with the New York Knicks? Yeah. 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 Mm. Amari Stoudemire is a great player, man. I mean, if you watch the, the what is it, the big three, mm -hmm. <laughs> he does his thing on the big three. He still can play. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's not like he, you know, he's really old. He's, he's like 38. So, I mean, just recently, you know what I'm saying, he was trying out for, for a couple of teams and whatnot, and he still got it. Okay. He still got it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I mean, he the knees might be a little bit, you know what I'm saying, but he could play right now in the NBA, he could play like 15, 20 minutes a game. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He could play backup. He could back up, be a backup center. You know All saying? right. But, um... Let's, talk, let's speed up. Yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. We gonna speed up to the current. I'm, I'm gonna get you there, baby. Right, I'm gonna right, get you there. I'm right. like a fish, man. Come on, I fish for Nick talk. I got this, baby. I got this. But uh, like you said, man, we gonna bring it up a little notch. Let's talk about these power forwards that the Knicks signed. We got Alfred Payton. Son. Alfred Payton. We got Julius Randle. Julius Randle. We got Michael Porter's and Todd Gibson. Ty Gibson and we got Iggy. Iggy, uh, damn, it's this guy, man. I can't. I know you talking about. I can't. I, his name is funny though. Yeah, but well, talk to me, man. Um, well, all these power. Oh, we got even got my man Marcus Morris, man. Marcus, right? Mark, Marcus, Marquise Morris. Yeah. Um, you impressed by any of these new names, man? Um, you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a, it's a big upgrade you know what I'm saying they, now they're a little more of a veteran team they got they can mix in with the younger guys you know guys like Taj Gibson can teach Mitchell Robinson a thing or two guys like Marquise uh, Morris can teach um, Kevin Knox and and uh what's his name Damian Dotson mm -hmm. and um you know, I mean, it'll be it'll be interesting this year to see where the Knicks go. Speaking about Damian Dotson, he's like the forgotten Nick, man. Yeah. Well, he was hurt mostly last year, but when he did play, he shined. He did pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Um, this will be his second year. It'll be a sophomore year. I think it's his sophomore year. But um, I'm supposing he's going to be a better player. You know what I'm saying? Um, hey, how you doing? Yeah. 
And what's up? And what you think about Frank Nilakina, man? Still being on the Knicks. Um, you think we should keep him for the second unit? No, I don't think. I, I think they should try to uh, trade him because you you got a you got a point guard in Dennis Mitchell, man. You know what I'm saying? I think he's a better player. Now, if the, the Knicks do keep him, they should keep him as a backup because the, uh, Frank Nilakina. He plays great defense. His arms are long, you know what I'm saying? And he could cover just about anybody, any a small forward, a shooting guard, or a point guard. You know what I'm saying? But as far as him shooting the ball. <laughs> you don't think that will ever improve no, with him? I, 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 you know what I'm saying? He's not a good shooter. You know what I'm saying? But um, his, his defensive prowess is great. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I think if the Knicks package something along with him, I think they could get something a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? So mm. Nothing against Frank. But uh, he still got to work on his shooting. You know what I'm saying? Great defensive player, but he still got got to work on his shooting. And Dennis Smith Jr. How much of a point guard do you think he's an improvement Dennis for Frank? Smith, Dennis Smith Jr. I think could be the next Derrick Rose if they just turn the boy loose, man, because he's he's explosive. You know what I'm saying he's fast. You know, I mean, and he also plays good defense. You know what I'm saying? And like he he can make the Knicks go. He can make the Knicks go. Hmm. Hmm. And Julius Randle? Julius Randle. They when, say, hey, yo. Julius Randle. You know what? The thing about Julius Randle, I mean, the first couple of years when he came in, he was hurt. You know what I'm saying? Now he's fully healthy. And last year with, with um Milwaukee, if I'm not mistaken, that's where he, No, no. He, was he came for the, the Pelicans. He played for the Pelicans. He did all right. You know what I'm saying? Along with uh, Anthony Davis and, and um, what's the point guard's name? Oh, God. But anyway, he did he did pretty good last year. It was a good pickup for the Knicks. Uh, I respect that. Even though the Knicks didn't get the, the top quality free agents, they got the second tier free agents, and you know that's something to build on. They're not going to be a playoff team. Ah. They're not going to be a playoff team this year. But however, you got to remember, there's, there's there's still a couple of free agents for next year. You know what I'm saying? So, I think the Knicks will be a player. I think they could have been a, play, a playoff team um, last season, man. I think we was tanking for Zion, which we didn't get. I'm not convinced that the Knicks is not a playoff contender team, man. I'm just not, man. So I, I don't know what's up, but I know that we got players like Michael Porters who let it be clear that we ain't sweating that. Kyrie and Kevin Durant situation. Mm -hmm. I like that, man. That dude's tough too. Michael yeah, yeah, Porter's yeah. coming from the front of the balls, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, do you think Kevin Knox would be able to play with these new players that's coming in, man? I think Kevin Knox is gonna shine, man. I really like his game, man. You know what I'm saying? And you know, last year he had an up and down rookie season. But he's going to get better because now that the Knicks acquired a few veterans, they're going to teach him the ropes. You know what I'm saying? What's his problem is he's got to stay out of foul trouble. He bulked up a little. Looked like he got a yeah, little stronger. You know what I'm saying? He's got to stay out of foul trouble. So, you know, with, with Taj Gibson and, and, and Julius Randle, they're going to help him along the way. And I think he'll be a better player this year. You think so? Yeah. All right. And my man, Mitchell Robinson. I like him. I really like him. Talk to me. I like him. Do you think he's going to be the franchise center for the Knicks? Yeah, I really do. I really do. Um, you know, it, it was sad that DeAndre Jordan went to the Nets. But um, like I said, you know, you got veterans like Taj Gibson. who's going to help him uh, uh, improve his game. You know what I'm saying? The defense is there. I think he's going to be one of the top – Shot uh, leaders and shot blockers blocks this year. Think he's gonna pass um Patrick Ewing's stats in the long haul? Nah, he's got a long way to go, man. Patrick Ewing is Mr. Nick, man. I mean, Patrick Ewing played his whole career in New York, basically, besides the last year in Seattle or whatever have you, man. But you know, it, it all it all depends on if he can stay injury free. You know what I'm saying, and just be a be a little consistent day in and day out with the team. But like I said. He's got veteran players to help him out, and uh, I think he's gonna he's gonna be much improved this year. Talk to me about Coach Fisdale. He's I like the Coach youth coach. Fisdale. You coach you Fisdale, you know what I'm saying? He he communicates well with his players. He's got championship pedigree in Miami. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
and he's going to the, the, the plays mesh well with him. You know what I'm saying? Would you put him up there with Mike Woodson? Like, you think he's going to uh, be one of the best? Nick Coach, Fizdale, we had uh, Rick Pitino, right, one time. We had Rick Pitino. Mike Woodson. We had Mike Woodson. We had um, Mike Pitello. Yeah. You know, we all these great Nick Coaches, man. Uh, like I said, you know, Fizdale, this is the second year. You got to give him time. And also, it's James Dolan, man. If James Dolan's impatient, like he always is, because he's just want to make headlines and headway, man. If James Dolan give him a chance, man, I think the Knicks will be all right. Okay, okay. You know what I'm now let's talk KD and Kyrie, man. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to come to the city of New York. Didn't happen. They wound up going to Brooklyn. Got the Brooklyn Nets. My question to you: Do you think KD? Made a mistake going to the Nets? Or do you think the Knicks made a mistake not giving him the money that he wanted? Keep in mind that he's hurt now. Same situation like with uh, Chris Pazingas. Yeah. When he got hurt and tore his ACL and he wanted that $10 million extension. Knicks like, no. One thing I like about what the Knicks is doing, man, they not doing what they was known for, picking up old injured players. You know, they're not doing that. What's your intake on it, man? Well, um, in a sense, I'm glad the Knicks didn't pick up, um, well, just didn't pay the money for K KD. Like, you, like I said, or like you said, the injury situation, we don't know how he's going to, you know what I'm saying, come back after after everything said and done. Um, Kyrie Irving, he wanted to play with KD, but you know what I'm saying, I guess they just didn't want to mesh with a younger team. You know what I'm saying? They wanted to, to go where there were, the, you know, I guess the, the Nets are a little more experienced as far as, as far know, as what? As far as their personnel. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They, they made the playoffs last year and, and just, they just didn't want to go to a team that they wasn't sure it was going to make the playoffs. But if Do you Kyrie, think the Knicks were scared? Do you think Kyrie and Kevin Durant were scared to play for the most critique fans in the city of New in York. In a sense, yeah. In a sense, yeah. In a sense, yeah, man. Because the, the Nick fan is very fickle. You know what I'm saying? Um, one night you could be cheered, and the next night you could be booed out, booed out the arena. You know what I'm saying? And um, them going over to Brooklyn. I mean, you know, the atmosphere I guess is more relaxed. You know what I'm saying? The the front office is. Excellent, and then the coaching staff is excellent. And you know, the guy who coaches the Nets, he had a winning pedigree in Atlanta and in San Antonio. Right. You know what I'm saying so, like you know, they just wanted to be around a winning culture. Now you know we all know that certain injuries and players set their careers back. Do you think Kevin Durant would be the same player after this torn Achilles? Well, Kevin Durant is over. So he's like 30 now. He's over 30 now. So. Uh, I would say possibly if if he, you know what I'm saying, if if he works hard at it, I think he'll be the same player. You know what I'm saying? I think he really will be the same player. Mm. You know? So. All right. And out of the trade with Chris Pazingas, because, you know, he did the snake shit. He bounced for the Knicks. Once he found out he wasn't the number one option. And being him wanting to be traded, being that he wanted to be traded, excuse me. We wound up losing Courtney Lee, Trey Burke, Tim Hardaway Jr. Out of them three players, man, who are you were glad to see go? And who do you regret seeing leave? Out of I Trey Burke, Tim Hardaway, Courtney Lee. Uh, well, who I regret seeing go would be Trey Burke because Trey Burke was starting to come into his own. Mm. I like Trey Burke. Trey Burke was good at Michigan, you know what I'm saying? And and he, he comes to the Knicks, and there was games that he he shot. I think him and Dennis Mitchell would have been a great backcourt. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Dennis Mitchell would have went to the two, and, and Trey Burke would have played the point. You know what I'm saying? Trey Burke had great games when he played with the Knicks. You know what I'm saying? He, a couple of games he scored over 30 points. Right. You know it seemed like Coach Fizdale was, was more in, in tune with uh, – Moutier and Frank Nilakina. 
I feel if Frank Nilkina wasn't on the Knicks, that Trey Burke was. He would have still been. Yeah, definitely. 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 That Moody A thing, I think he was a throw in on the Trey, but um, I'm not really impressed with him. You know what I'm saying? Well, Moutier? I'm not really impressed with well, he, he She's been shipped to uh, Utah. Yeah, so... Um, and believe it or not, Trey Berg's on the 76ers now. And and you know what I'm saying? I think he's going to come back. <laughs> you think he's going to come back and haunt us? Yeah? I like Trey Berg, man. Trey Berg was a good player, man. He was yeah. a good player. Yeah. He was compared to, you know, Allen Iverson. Yeah, he's, he's a good player, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. So... You don't see the Knicks going to the playoffs? Not this year. You know what I'm saying? Um, I th I still think they they need uh, a consistent 20 points plus point scorer a game. They don't have one. Yet. You know what I'm saying? A person that's going to knock down 20 points on a consistent basis. I'm talking about not not necessarily a superstar, but a person that you you can count on to get 20 points. Every game. And you don't think Dennis Smith Jr. is that? Well, I think he's he's pretty much that, but you don't expect that from 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 your point guard. You know what I'm saying? You need you need a, a wing or a pretty much a big man that's going to get you 20 points. You don't think Julius Randle is that? He could be. Speaking but of, we'll see. Speaking of Julius Randle, there's some been some talks that comparing his game to KP that he's better. More aggressive. Yeah. You agree with that? Yeah. Well, um, Julius Randle's a post player. You know what I'm saying? He can shoot the rock, but he, that's his game down low. You know what I'm saying? He's big, wide body. You know what I'm saying? And he's left-handed. So, like, it's hard It's hard to stop this guy. It's, once he gets in the low blocks and he backs you down and he turns with the, the left hand, it's, it's hard to block his shot, too. Yeah? Yeah. Do you think he could bang it on somebody like Zion Williams? Oh, Julius yeah, Randle? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. He's bigger than Zion, man. He's bigger than Zion. Both do plays, but he's bigger than Zion. He's 6'9", 260. Okay. He's a big dude, man. Speaking of Zion Williams, we didn't get him. Pelicans got him. See, he's busting out his shoes. He's saying he's overweight. How you feel about that? You think... uh? We better off with what we got in R.J. Barrett than to be worrying about Zion Williams. I think yeah, I think the Nets, the Knicks are better off for R.J. Barrett because Zion Williams he came in overhyped, you know what I'm saying? And like, it's not like he's LeBron James or anything, you know what I'm saying? You gotta we gotta wait to see what happens during the season, you know what I'm saying? They're comp they're comparing him like he's LeBron James and. Or somebody, he's not. He only played one season of college ball or whatever have you. When LeBron James came in, he was just a monster in high school. He was a a man amongst boys in high school. You know what I'm saying? And he comes into the league and, and he's consistent. You know what I'm saying? We don't know. We don't know what's gonna happen with Zion. You know what I'm saying? I hope he does good. But from what what people are saying about him or whatever have you. You know what I'm saying? And then he got injured in, in, in um, the summer league, and they took him out. They, they don't want to play him no more in the summer league. And right. So now we're going to see what happens, you know what I'm saying, when, when the preseason games start and, and what happens. But, you know what I'm saying, I I, I, I just got to wait and see and, and find out who the real Zion Williams Can he play in the NBA? Because you had a lot of great players that came out of college or whatever have you. They transform into the NBA. They didn't do nothing. And there it is, man. I want to thank y'all for tuning in to Nicavelli TV. Because we got the OG right here putting the Steve peace o. sign. Uh oh. Sports fanatic. Uh oh. Holler at me. And that's what it is, man. We out. Peace.